Clap. Hey, we're being recorded. There we go. <laughs> All right. So we are recording. This is the Saturday morning work session. Um, it is August, uh, August 7th, 2021. And let's go start with the agenda. And as of right now, um, we have David McNamara, Diane Shrimp, Mark Ruger, Tony Benedetti, um, Joe Curl, and Brian Wolf are not in attendance yet, but maybe soon. So, all right, Mark, whenever. So Jesse's not know. here today. Jesse is not here today. He is on vacation. Oh. Okay. He's gonna be here so how long is he on vacation? Um, I believe I have an email from him that he is going to try to, as long as his flight is not delayed or canceled, he is going to try to make the meeting on Monday. But I believe, <laughs> let me verify that. Go ahead. Um, while I verify that, you're fine, Mark. Okay. So looking at Monday's meeting and our legislation that's coming up. 2021-25 is just uh, affirming the appointment of Jess Binghamton as a full-time police officer, second reading, nothing big there. I'm sure Council Person McNamara will ask Chief Delp if this guy's doing a good job. And since we haven't heard that he isn't, I'm sure he will be. I absolutely will do all of those things and all of those things will happen. Yep. And just so you know, just for the record, we, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, we haven't had any issues, problems, questions, or concerns. I would hope. I would hope we haven't had any if we're yeah. going to approve them. No, this officer has been an officer for quite a while. Um, he came to us from Mifflin, and he is wonderful. I mean, we've not had we've not had any issues whatsoever. Excellent. Uh, it looks like we're getting the first reading of twenty twenty one twenty six. That is the native plant uh, resolution. I mean, I wonder if I can skip past all this stuff. While you're skipping, um, Jesse has every intention of being at the meeting Monday. However, if anybody is aware of what's been going on with flights, don't hold your breath. <laughs> Just don't get in a fight, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. They've been canceling flights left and right, and yeah. um, that's an issue right now. So. If he's on spirit, he'll never make it. If he's on Southwest, he might be there. Well, he's on, if he's on a spirit, they're going to have him get out and push. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I didn't I ask that part. I am not seeing in the packet the full description of 20. Well, that, I should have said something. I mean, I noticed it that the resolution for the storm sewers, I, I don't think the top page came through. Yeah, like the last second well. page. May have been the way that we scanned it in. Um, we can go over it. Uh, let me see if. Now, I mean, with this one, oh, here we go, here we go. It was above the stuff. Um, natural world has been damaged about non native and invasive species. It. It, it, I looked through there, that top page didn't come through. I didn't yeah, say anything. I was, I, we'll get to that one when we're at that one. Um, I was at the plant one is resolved that the village of Minerva Park encourages the use of native plants in both commercial and residential construction projects within its boundaries and that the village of Minerva Park shall seek out and prioritize the use of native plants and or non-invasive plants whenever possible relevant to the horticultural elements of all future village construction projects. Um, so once again, this is a nice resolution it does not carry with it the weight of no for anyone who's concerned with that. It doesn't say you can't plant your whatever maple. It just says, please don't. But I'm going to frown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying as far as, you know, what it's, it really does is it's not something that later people are gonna have to apply for whatever permits because they wanna plant a Japanese maple. It's just an official, no. it's an official yeah. recommendation. Yeah. So I don't think we're probably going to have, I mean, it's just the first reading. Does anyone have any discussion they want to do on that? Since this there's is a time spelling, to there's a spelling error and I'll get it. Awesome. What did I spell wrong? 
No, she's talking about the other resolution. No, oh. the bill. It says the village instead of village. There's an F instead oh. of a D. <laughs> All right, so now we're moving on to more important stuff. Not, let me rephrase that, not more important, more pressing matters. That'd be 2021-27, a resolution authorizing the mayor and fiscal officer to enter into contract for the 2021 storm sewer improvements project and declaring it an emergency. And I'm seeing in my parentheses here, first reading intent to waive readings and pass as an emergency. No, I'm, I screwed that. Okay, so no, we are not waiving readings, only passing it as an emergency. Um, I don't know why, so this is, this is why we do this. Um, this, hang on, this is for the what storm sewer. What is this for? Okay, that's what I'm going through. So this is, we are doing a reading. Um, Mike Flickinger has completed all of the information for the East Shore Court project. That project has been advertised to be bid out um, by, based on the recommendations from our attorney. Um, that's what's missing at the very top. I don't know how I did this legislation, so I'm not sure why it cut off the top page. So the, the go ahead. The bid advertisements are actually going to be bid or um, out for the next three weeks. All of the bids will be returned back by August 27th. Um, this will only need to be passed as an emergency because um, we can get moving forward in the event that we do pick a bid. Now, in the event that we don't pick a bid or we don't get any bids, then we don't move any further. Um, September 13th is the date that we have our meeting. So we will have two weeks to go over all of the bids. We will have, we have the next 30 days to go over the project. We have the next everything. I already see Tony's face having a heart attack. Well, there. because, it, okay, are you done? Sorry. No, I'm actually not done. So the whole purpose to this, just so Mark and everybody's fully aware is once again, this is the recommendation that we move forward with the East Shore Court project. This has been a project that we've talked about for two to three years. Um, so taking the recommendations from our attorney or taking our recommendations from the village engineer, we are moving forward with the recommendations um, to get bids. Does not mean we're going to move forward with those bids. However, hopefully we will. Um, but once these bids come in, we will be able to look at the pro look at the project and look at everything. And again, in the next 30 days, we can bring Mike Flickinger in to go over the project and go over everything that we are in the process of doing. And go ahead, Tony. Well, I don't know if you recall the last streets committee meeting, we decided that we were going to hold off on the East Shore Court project until the, uh, the recommendations for the uh, or, or the analysis of the storm sewers was done. I specifically remember saying, Joe, relax, because we're going, we may not do this part of the project. Okay. That's what was decided in the last committee meeting, Mayor. So on August 13th, we're expecting all of that information to be delivered to us. Um, <laughs> so once again, this is all going hand in hand. In the event that we want to get this project moving forward this year, this is a first reading. So that is the whole point of what we're doing. This is the first reading for that project. That information should be back to us by around August 13th. You, you just got finished saying that we were going to pass this as an emergency on Monday night. No, she no. didn't. I, I actually did not. I, I said that there would be three readings. September 13th okay. is when it would pass. And we would be asking on September 13th for it to be done as an emergency. Mike okay, Lickinger right. just specifically asked me to start the readings or recommend it. He did not ask me. He recommended that if we started the readings, we wouldn't be once again, trying to pass wave things and do all of that. We're aware, as you guys are fully aware, there's X's in there for the contractor name because we've not received bids. Um, they are not due again. And for the record, August 27th is when the bids are due. And again, the rest of the storm analysis should be back to us around August 13th. So the goal and the plan is to have Mike Flickinger come in sometime after August 13th, but before September 13th. And what I guess you're not, okay, so between the time of the 13th, when the information comes in, we're supposed to know what we want to move forward with on the East Shore Court project. Because I'm we're going to pass it as an emergency on the 9th. So six days after we get the information, we're supposed to pass it as an emergency. Or you're recommending it, it's being recommended that we pass this as an emergency to get it out to bid. When we're we, we'll have we're already out to bid, bid, bids again. The bids come in on August 27th. Well, well I'm not we, sure. I'm not sure where the six days you know, is coming. You are putting out to bid you're, up you're, something that we haven't decided that that's what we're going to do yet. Hey, Tony, I, I'm going to stop. 
as an administration, as part of the administration, my job is to get these projects set in front of you, get you guys the information and you guys have the ability to vote, to vote for all of them. There are six members, six members get to vote. If you don't <laughs> like the way, stop. I'm in the middle of a sentence. If you just like the Garmin Miller contract, there are six people that got to vote on that. And there's six people that are going to get to vote on this. If you don't like the direction of the East Shore Court project, you can vote no. There are five other members the, that are going to have me. all of this I am in mid-sentence. You've stopped me for it, and I'm, I'm not sorry. doing this I'm today. I'm sorry. I'm telling you, there are six members. They will all have a chance to vote. My recommendation is that we're going to move forward on this East Shore Court project the way that our engineer has described it. If for some reason, Streets Committee doesn't want to and they want to recommend not, you guys can recommend that to the other five members. I am following our engineers' recommendations and I'm going to stick with that. So everybody will have a chance to vote for the East Shore Court project if it's not in the, if it's not in the rest of the members. Got, if they don't want to do it, they don't have to. My job is to continue to bring you guys the information and the things that need done in this village. You guys vote. I don't. All I can do is bring it to you. And that's what I'm doing. Are you done? I am done. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this one more time, Mayor. Go ahead, Tony. The street committee had a meeting. The in the last streets committee meeting, we talked about not... I, I told Joe, Joe, the part of the project that you're concerned about, we haven't decided that we're going to do that yet. That's what the street committee discussed in the last meeting. So your recommendation has no bearing on this. It's what the committee, and I will report that at this meeting because this is the first meeting we've had since the street committee meeting. Okay. And I'm going to report to count to everyone that the street committee decided that they want to hold off on moving forward with this East Shore Court project until we have time to look at the information that is going to be provided to us in the future. That's and as my job. Mayor, hold on. Go ahead. That is what was decided in the street committee meeting that you're referring to. So it's not me saying that this is what we want to do. It's the committee that is saying this. And you and I, are overriding yes. what the committee recommended. And I'm going to stick with that because I currently have, and Diane, I will go to you next. Right. And I'm going to stick with that because we have residents that are claiming that their houses are falling in due to this project that you guys don't want to move forward to. So I'm going to, as the administrator, move forward with this project, period, mm -hmm. as long as I'm able to, to get it to the six council members. So you know again, what? if the streets committee decides that they don't want to do it, you can explain that to the other six people. I will explain to them all of the information that I have and Mike Flickinger has. And if they want to move forward, th then we can still move forward. So I don't agree point. with the recommendation. Just a qualify point, Mayor, if I may. The, the, the point is, is that the council has not decided to accept any bids or move forward with the project. The project itself right. is not actually moving forward. All you're doing is getting information and putting putting the pieces in front of council in another month and, and a week for them to make a final decision. So that's, that's, that's where we're at. That, that seems perfectly reasonable. I mean, especially in the case of flooding, flooding houses. I mean, if, if there's, if there's very few things that I consider a valid emer use of emergency legislation, this would actually be one of them. I, I completely yeah. agree in that there are parts of the East shore core project that absolutely need to be done. I am not disagreeing with that. And we need to do this as soon as possible. But the entire project, the way it is put together today, has elements of it that are not necessary, provided that the uh, storm sewer analysis verifies that. That's, why, again, that's why you, Mayor, I, I appreciate you wanting to get things done. But what you were talking about doing is putting out a, a bid for a project that has parts of it that we may not want to do. You can cut those projects. And that hasn't, okay. been, and again, and that hasn't been decided one way or the other yet through the committee. And guess what? It's going out to bid and you guys will have the opportunity to vote on it. <laughs> this is a first reading. So I know Diane has something she would like to say and then I would like to move forward to the next piece of legislation, Mark. Okay. Um, 
being on the street committee, um, I know that we, uh, I don't believe, I, I'll have to get the recording on the street committee. I was there, but I, I don't remember us um, uh, voting on anything. We, we talked about it. And I know that uh, uh, the street committee uh, is not, uh, you know, necessarily, I mean, I didn't, I didn't think we shouldn't go forward with this, but my concern is, is that uh, Joe in particular is still, is still out there. And, and so uh, in terms of his feelings about it, and of course he, he has property that would be impacted as well. So he's, he is, uh, has his own focus on this. So, so I am concerned that the street committee is, is adrift in terms of where they are on this uh, waiting. Uh, they keep changing their mind. And so I appreciate where the mayor is coming from in terms of we, we have the engineering report and, and you know, if we, if we, we need to keep moving, we need, need to keep moving in a parallel fashion, I think. Um, while this is going on, then uh, somehow or another, uh, the rest of the, the street committee needs to be reconciled to, to the solution. But, uh, you know, in terms of us agreeing as a committee, um, maybe Joe and Tony agreed, so that made it um, that's two to one. So that's fine, but I'm on the street committee too, and I don't necessarily, I am concerned and confused that, that we're going backwards on this in, in the street committee in terms of what we think and all the emails from Joe since the street committee about how, you know, maybe we could start over from the beginning because what, he's, what it sounds like he's talking about are things we talked about a year mm -hmm. ago. So I, I hope that that can all get straightened out in the interim and if, however that can be done, but, but, but I would, I'm, I certainly in agreement we need to push forward as we're trying to in the background trying to 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 um, clarify some things but but I, I definitely am in agreement that this paperwork and this this bidding process needs to move forward it's it's time okay. thank you thank you Diane and that's, that's the goal um, um, some things to point out that I think some members are perhaps not hearing or getting or understanding. Um, of course, we are putting out a bid to repair, I, I assume this is at East Shore, the, 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 the dam head or whatever, not the dam, but you know, the, the big water thing that's yeah. made of wood timbers and collapsing. Um, uh, as Councilperson Benedetti pointed out, Streets is concerned about the report that we are gonna get from the rest of the sewer upwind of it or upriver from it. Uh, I believe Mayor Hughes pointed out that that report will be ready before these bids will all be in. Um, what we're doing is assuming we're gonna have to do this. So we have the bids out, which don't cost us really, well, however much they cost us for Mike or Eric or whoever puts those together in regular hourly work. And then we'll get bids. By the time we get bids and have to vote on accepting one, we will have the report for the rest of the line to look at. We will have the further recommendation and we won't be three weeks behind on accepting it. Uh, so this will be read as a first reading Monday night. Um, and until we get further details, I'm all about getting a couple weeks ahead, as we all know how long it takes to pass and move something into legislation. Just wait for Monday night meeting to explain why that's a completely ridiculous freaking. No, there. you can explain that now because Monday night I'm gonna wait for Monday night. The time to do it. Hey, Tony, I I'm gonna make this comment and I wasn't gonna do this today, but you you having these conversations and threatening and doing all of these things outside of these meetings, I'm not going to tolerate it. Uh, I'm just telling you, you're not gonna waste village time and continue to do this for the next. If you wanna have this conversation, this is a live recorded, or it is a recorded, go for it. You can have your 10 minutes, but we will be setting the 10 minute clock because I, am, I have had so many residents over the last two weeks tell me that they are tired of listening to the Monday night meetings that are just going in circles. They want village information and they want 
They want to see a council that they could, the conversations that I had at National Night Out and at the pool over the last two weeks, the residents are getting fed up. They would like a meeting that is professional, that is, this is our chance to go over and for you to ask all of the questions that you want. Just because you don't like an answer, you should not be. I'm tired of you telling me what to do. I'm tired of you telling me what to do. I'm not telling so, you what to do, but you are wasting you are. village money. You are wasting the attorney's time. You're wasting the chief's time. You're doing all of that. That's so we're opinion, here in this meeting if you want to hash it out. Are you done? But, Telling village employees over the last couple of days and some of the things that you've been saying. I told I'm not one village it. employee that you're out of control. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm out of control. control. I have no problem. I'll say it we right here. Okay. So I'll again, we're not going to do this. I'll be we're, saying we're really not going to do it, but I'm not going to tolerate it. Listen, I don't care what you think. Okay. okay. You well, you're not going to harass problem. me. You and mm -hmm. Eric are a huge problem here. Okay. And I don't Actually, know. You, I'm sure that you, let me finish. You want me to get it over with? You just yes. told me that, you know, that, that, uh, that there's everybody you talk or a lot of people you talk to are sick of listening to me. Well, I can tell you that a lot of people that I talk to are sick of listening to you. Okay, so <laughs> let's go. You know, what I'm trying to say here, the reason that this sewer project should not be put out to bid, it's this simple is because we haven't decided what the scope of that project's going to be yet. And to put it out to bid, and then to come back and change what the scope is going to be, is stupid. In it's actually not opinion, stupid. Right, and, and Tony, here's the only thing I'm gonna say about that. I will take the village engineer's recommendation for a project every day over again. That's I mean, all we, I'm gonna say. We, we hire and I agree we, with that, but what you don't understand- No, you're not agreeing with that. I know what I'm trying to explain to you is that I'm waiting before I decide that we should, or before I feel that we should move forward, I want to hear what's going to be presented on the 18th. That's what you don't- Nobody's presenting anything or, on the 18th. Or when it, whenever he presents his information or, and comes up with his analysis, I'm waiting for that. Okay, well, so, but you're putting it out to bid before that comes so, back. So if I may, real quick. So the thing is, is that all this information is going out there. You're gonna get all your information prior to having to vote on it in a third reading. If you accept the bids and there needs to be a change in the scope, you work that out with the contractor you select after the fact. That's not that hard. I don't know what's difficult in this situation, but hey, Tony, as you've said to the, to the village employees, I'm stupid, the mayor's stupid, we're stupid. That was your exact quote. So <laughs> I, put, put that on the record. I mean, you're, you're harassing line. people. So it is what it is. Go okay, on. so let's move forward, Mark. Thank you. Okay, um, next we are looking at uh, 12 2021, an ordinance amending the uh, codified ordinances. This is the modified uh, note uh, disturbing the piece that includes the noise ordinance. Zooming on down. And if you look in your packet, it does have, oh, well, that's a shame. I wish it would have, okay. I'm not in charge of that. It would have been nice if the changes were in a different font color or something just to see what was being added new. But I believe it's everything from, are we on the noise? We're on the noise. The new so stuff. Everything from six down, I believe, is new. Off the top of my head, I'm not looking at it, but there was a, I believe, under five, everything got added there. I can, I can color that for everyone's assistance. Yeah, I mean that, that'd be by only, just okay. so. And this is, oh, I already scrolled down. Which reading is this? Second. You're not, okay, so this is just the second reading. Yeah, if you could get that colored so we can see what is the actual new stuff. But you're saying it's. Six down. Yeah, if I if I recall correctly, but I'll I'll probably highlight that and email that out uh, by Monday. Okay. Uh, do we want to discuss this, please? Well, yeah, I would because you know the last That's meeting fine. we talked talked about what plainly audible means. I was told that I misconstrued what plainly audible means. And yeah, you know, I believe I'm correct. You did misconstrue what plainly audible means. 
well, okay, but I've since then I've you know searched it on Google, and you know that's the what I you know I did a search, and what plainly audible means is that if you can detect what is being detect a sound, and all the the legislation that I've seen that talks about a 75 or 50 foot distance, it's with regards to uh, like a car radio, is that if you can hear it and it doesn't need to be understood, you don't need to comprehend what is being, being said, or you don't have to understand the words of the song or the music, you just need to be able to hear it. That is the definition of plainly audible. It is not what Brian described it as. You know, would, tell me what part of this I've got wrong, Mark. So what is your suggestion then that we should change the wording to? What's that? What is your suggestion that you sh we should change the wording to? You're, you're I'm not, no, I'm not suggesting we change the wording. What I'm suggesting is that we have a specific time that we require that 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 goes into effect. That's what I'm recommending. You mean time of easing or something like that? And what would your time frame be then? That you Sunset. Were okay, so that of course runs into the problem that the sun sets at 5.30 in December and 9.30 in July. And that's yeah. exactly, I have, and, and I, what I was trying to say at the last meeting is that I have a, a wet saw that I set up outside of people's houses when I'm working. And I can tell mm -hmm. you that I just feel uncomfortable making noise after it gets dark. So, so in the winter time, I only work till it gets dark. And that's sometimes, you know, 5.30, 5, 5.30. But in the summertime, I work, you know, up to eight, nine o'clock at night. You know, sure. so yeah, I am recommending that this, uh, you know, the requirement for not hearing it 75 feet away doesn't go into effect until dark, sunset, because you can pinpoint uh, sunset so every day. Has made a, uh, a suggestion to change it. Um, I'm going to, I mean, we'll just do a little straw whip around here. Um, I am in disagreement of that. I don't think having a flexible actual time on the clock makes sense. Diane, would you like to weigh in? Um, actually, no, I would not like to weigh in. You don't want to vote uh, one where you're abstaining. I, I have a piece of, just a piece of clarifying point here with, with Tony's suggestion, and I, and I don't have any issues either way with what the council decides from a time frame standpoint. I know it got discussed in legislation. I just want to point out that Number one, in, in Tony's example, in Tony, in, anything with contracting stuff is defined separately in the code as to as to your exemption and when you can work and stop work. So, you know, you saw, you know, wintertime can go later than 530 or dusk. I realize you, as a matter of policy, you know, when you're working, stop your saw at dark. But the fact is, is in, in, in the village, people don't have to stop it until the, the time, which is later, um, which I thought we changed as well. Um, I, I don't know the exact time, but it's it's not 530. It's after seven. And it's just exempt in Sundays is a day that in holidays, people that can't work at all. So from a contracting standpoint. Now, the other item is the problem we run into is that darkness does not necessarily suggest that people are going to have wild and raucous parties. Right. You may have a third shift guy that's sleeping in the day and then I've got a giant people decide to start. Yeah, there we go. Miss, uh, Mr. McNamara does that sleeps in the day and you may have neighbor decides to have a, a, a raucous party, you know, at some point in the mid afternoon, they got drinking early on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday and, and it, it is all hell's broken loose. Right. So it, it's one of those things that council should consider before setting any times. It's, I, I think to give the maximum flexibility per chief's recommendation and per the Jesse's recommendation, it, you kind of leave it open for the officer's discretion, which is what they're trying to do there. Not to mention the idea. I'm, I'm sorry, mayor. No, I was just saying I agree with Eric. That was the recommendation from the chief is to not put a time because you have a wild party, OSU party, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon and they have no leg to stand on. Yeah, I like the idea. I, I understand that. 
I, I understand that. I would like to, the chief to have the flexibility. And, uh, but that means that I trust the officers to use good judgment and which, which at this time I do. And I hope I'm not wrong in that. I, but that, I, that trust is required with this <laughs> our ordinance. I would also <laughs> remember that if I recall correctly, this, the 75 foot um, stipulation is actually more generous than um, other municipalities. That's true. Yeah. Well, so right now the vote's one for, one against, one abstain. One for, well, one. I mean, I'm, not, I, I'm voting for it. I'm not abstaining. Oh, I didn't, okay. I didn't no, mean no, to no. say, I, I meant to say that I thought we had enough discussion on this and I was uh, ready to, to go ahead and vote for this and I uh, didn't need to talk about you, it anymore. You are, not, you are not behind a change in, uh, in the, the verbiage of it then, is what you're saying. It doesn't need amended is what you're saying in your mind. Me? Yeah. No, I, I think the resolution as it stands is fine. All right. Um, so that's looking two or three council members at least are saying it's fine. Um, so I don't see a reason to amend it currently. Um, and that say, is thank you. That is all the uh, legislation for Monday night. Awesome. Ooh, and that's me hitting my computer and making it fly. <laughs> all right. So let's move to old business, new business, whatever we want to do. And it's eight thirty, and maybe we can get out of here early today. Well, seeing that Jesse's not here, I'm sure we will because and I guess I, if it's okay, you know, has everybody had a chance to look at the, the contract, parts of the contract or any of the emails that I've been sending out regarding the Garmin Miller contract? Tony, I've seen them, but I figured they'd be discussed the here. What's that? I said I've seen them, but I figured we would discuss them today. Okay, I'm just... I want to see if everyone's uh, up to speed as they can be. Uh, you know, I really don't know where even to start with this. You know, it's so messed up in so many different ways. Uh, okay. Can I? I guess. Can I please, Mayor? Or, or, yeah, go I, ahead. Go ahead. I'd like to hear what. I what's think I was up. just really going to ask. I, I think that the the big thing that I'm going to say about this is this is legislation that passed by five members. The transfer of money for the appropriation also transferred um, by five members. The legislation states that I can enter into an agreement not to exceed $116,000. So you have done this now for this is our third meeting that okay. we have talked about this particular contract. Um, I have been given authorization to agree into a contract for up to $116,000 in which we have done. That, that's not true. Okay. So this is okay. what the problem is, is that, okay, what I would like to read from you, the problem is the resolution, the, the, 2117 the resolution that was written is full of errors okay and we what we need to do is go back to resolution 2020 32 the the resolution that's being described in resolution 2117 now the most important line here is that in resolution uh, 2032 it says in section two, the cost of the project will be outlined in the final agreement and will require approval from council. That is the language. This is the most important language here that we need to concentrate on everyone is it says in resolution 32, 2032, that the council is required to outline the cost of the project in the final agreement. And that final agreement needs to be approved by council. Now, this agreement was just constructed within the last couple of days. And, that, and that's what I need the mayor to, to explain to us. When did this contract when did you sign this contract? When did it 
when was it presented to counsel? Because this contract, this contract that you that you gave me, that's all filled out, was not given to count, was not available to counsel the day that we passed it. On Tony. June 16th or June 14th is when we passed resolution 2117 was passed on June 14th. The agreement that you have given everyone is dated June 24th. Correct. So. Right. So right. Let, let me jump After in. I was given authorization. Okay, wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. The contract was not written the day that we approved the contract. <laughs> Okay, well, let, let, let me jump in. Maybe this will clear it up for Tony, yeah. maybe not. So here's how this generally works, Tony, and I'll, I'll let Jesse opine on how contracts work with municipalities. So in general, the process is, as was received on the 2020 resolution, you had a, a blank skeleton for how that contract, the final contract would look along with their initial letter. Now, what transpired is that after the phase one went through, we went to council agreed to move to phase two, a new resolution authorizing the mayor to negotiate an into agreement was put before council and that was authorized. And furthermore, the amount of money was authorized. And so all the technical T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Now what occurs since you allowed the mayor to enter into negotiation at that point, the business terms are filled in Legal counsel reviews that along with staff. Legal counsel did review it prior to the mayor signing it. Some changes were made to that, to the contract. And we reviewed the business terms as well. There were a couple points that were addressed in the revised letter, which had to do specifically with geotechnical consultant costs so that we would not have to come back to council because we want to make sure that everything is included on the amount that council approved, right? So that was, again, negotiated and agreed to. And after that's done, the mayor then gets her, you know, after Jesse gives his okay, she signs it. And that's how it works. Now, Jesse can opine on that as in any particular details that you may think are incorrect, I would say discuss with legal counsel. So, and he can explain how this works. If you don't believe me, we've just well, done this so many times. And again, you know, I, but as you stated, I don't know what I'm talking about, but sure, go ahead. Well, Eric, here's the thing is that it's you and the mayor that are that have done all these things. And so far, you're the only two people that are saying that you've you've done everything correctly. Talk okay, to so, Jesse if you okay, don't here, like the on. process. I'm not what well, here's what I want to hear. I want to know when what specific day this contract was signed. Number one, Mayor, what day did you sign this contract? It is there a date, date on it, Eric? There is, there is a date on I it. Didn't I didn't mean, ask be, what it the date be the, on the contract is. It should be the 24th. What, hold on. It should be the 24th, I didn't ask if what, I remember right. I didn't ask what day the, is on the contract. I asked you what day you signed it. What the day was signed? After that, I after I date. had authorization, Tony. Yeah. I, okay. I don't know. I can see you what date it was. You don't remember what day it was? You don't remember? I want to hear. I don't either. I mean, I don't know what I ate for lunch yesterday, Tony. What's that? I don't know what I ate for lunch yesterday. I, I don't know oh, so what, what day I specifically okay, your, put, your here's answer what I'll tell to the you. question. Your answer to the question is you don't know what day you signed it. However, that, I can see- It was see after what authorization. I co okay, okay, so what you're saying that you signed it sometime af after- I was given authorization. What's that? Yeah, I was. I signed it after I was given authorization. I signed it after June fourteenth when it was approved. And you're not going to, but you don't remember what specific day that was. Tony, do you know what date you signed the last check for your rent? No, I don't. Yeah, I, I do. Signed At least I can okay. figure that out. I can figure I mean, it out, but in the middle of a meeting right now, no, I don't have that date. Tony, in we, front we, of we me. can what look date that I up. A specific contract. I mean, this is okay. very silly question. She didn't sign it prior to council. We, after council authorized this, we have to go back and get all the business terms filled in. And then it has to be presented back to Jesse to review. And we review everything. And then the mayor signs it. But she she clearly okay. signed it. We'll pull it up after okay. council authorized everything. I, I That's, I, well, that's I, not my question. OK. I'm okay can we let question. somebody yeah. else in council have a, 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 a second to like? Yeah. Right. From what I'm hearing from you, Tony, 
your your main sort of bone of contention here is that the cost of the project will be outlined in the final agreement and will require approval from council, which is the 2020-32, which was passed after obviously 2021-17 or what have you. Um, and Jesse can opine on this because I'm not a lawyer. Uh, it would seem to me that when we pass 2017, saying we approve up to $116,000, that as long as the cost doesn't, as long as the cost for the final agreement isn't over $116,000, we as a council had already voted on and approved that money to be spent. We um, now that does seem weird that we approved it before we saw the final thing. Uh, but we have approved that amount of money for a contract with Garmin Miller. We now have a contract for Garmin Miller that is that amount of money or less. I'm not sure the exact dollars and cents. Uh, so it seems like council actually did approve that 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 cost. You're right. Like we, you're you're absolutely right. Is that we yeah. have approved the cost, but yes. what we haven't done is approve the final agreement. So that's here's how this gets solved, understand. right? And that's what you, okay, solved. let me finish, Eric. It's very and simple. And this is I'm where, say. Eric, I really don't, Eric, you're the one that decide, has decided that this is okay. And at this, is, at this point, I don't I know what Jesse decide. has approved or not. Eric, I'm, hold on. <laughs> the point of this that everyone needs to understand is that in resolution 2032, then this is where it doesn't necessarily require us to approve the cost. What it does require us to do is to approve the final agreement, which will have the outline of the cost in it. So council is required, I'm going to read it again. Section two of 2032 says, the cost of the project will be outlined in the final agreement. So that's where where I'm not done. But this is gonna this Eric, is gonna agree I'm with you. Not done. Stop. This is gonna agree with you. I just want to cut this stupidity off. I'm sorry. It's too much, dude. So here's here's how this will work. All right. We're gonna put it back in front of legal counsel. Very easy to do. He can compare and contrast both resolutions. He can he can opine on whether we need to make a technical change, need to put something back in front of the council or other options. And and then it it, it happens that way. So everything is technically correct if we're already technically correct great he'll opine on that if we're not we'll make a technical correction this right. has been done um, in the past and we need to get jesse involved and this is my yes. other question when did jesse review the contract that was signed he reviewed it back between if i'm looking at my notes 622 to 624 he was reviewing stuff and sending sending things back to garmin miller that they needed to change in the contract Okay. Now, it, okay, I'm, I want to move on to a different topic in the contents of the contract. And that's where I'd ask everyone to look at uh, articles 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, and 11.5. This is where it discusses the uh, percentages of work uh, in the, that is done in the project. And, uh, you know, 3.2 and 3.3 uh, describe what the schematic phase and the design document phase of the project. Uh, the, the question that I had presented to ask everyone was, you know, the way I read this contract is that right now they have already completed the schematic phase and the design document phase of the contract. And we're about to start into the construction phase of the contract. Now, this is my question to everyone, because I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure this out. Doesn't it appear that we have already completed the schematic phase of the uh, schematic and design document phase of the project? And no. if that is true, okay. No. Nope. Okay, then help me understand. I'll refer you to the uh, village newsletter that came out uh, the other day. Um, 
under village community municipal building status, council passed a resolution that allowed the mayor to enter an agreement with Garmin Miller Architects to design a solution. The proposed draft design is now complete, draft design. Garmin Miller will spend the next several months working on the final layout of the building plans required to put the building out to bid. So I'm not sure what it says in the contract, but in the Newsletter says, well, I'm glad that the so, I'm glad that we're using the village newsletter as our legal. <laughs> tell you the, 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 the design the design is the design is uh, the schematics and the design are not done. Um, what was done was what was called phase one, which was an agreement that uh, Tiffany signed with the uh, uh, to to actually come up with a concept. So the, the $12,000 we spent was spent for uh, mm -hmm. this design concept uh, that was presented to us. And that, that was that. And so now that we know we're in the ballpark, uh, they're going to actually do the schematics and design for real for the purposes of bidding out the project. Yes. So it's completely, completely different uh, what's going on here. So uh, anyway, that's... And Tony, the reason I read that is that's that's the report from admin. I understand the newsletter isn't a binding resolution, but what that shows is the intent of admin who has entered into a contract saying, this is where we are. We still have some final things to change and some, and I mean, your worry is that Tiffany and Eric are out of control or something and running roughshod. And what I'm saying is publicly their intent is, hey, we still need some more stuff on this which goes to what the thought process is. Well, I understand. The I just, is we're not finished. Well, if you look, like I point out, if you look at uh, article 3.4, which describes construction documents, because that's what yeah, it appears I mean, like to me, this is the way I understand this. Okay, hold on, like let me finish. The way I understand this, the way it's been explained to me <laughs> is that that Garmin Miller is getting ready to put together the construction document documents and put this out to bid. Yeah, that's going to yeah. take a while. I, okay, I, I understand that. that. I, under, I understand that. Input on it. I mean. Okay, so just so council's aware, for who's here, um, we have had two meetings with Garmin Miller to go over design. So we are currently in the design period. That's where we are. We have not gone any further than that. Um, so I, I appreciate once again, all the questions that you have. I'm, I'm glad people are actually reading. Um, so, and asking questions, I got nothing to hide. I apparently, you know, somebody thinks I do, but no, this is, this is part of a process. Um, like Eric had advised, and I just want to say it for myself, if there's any type of clerical errors or anything like that, we will get it done. Point being, um, and this is, I think this is what's just frustrating for me. There are six council members, five members want to move forward with this project. So if there is a clerical error, we will all be more than I and Eric, um, since apparently, you know, whatever, we will be more than happy to get that done, get it updated and get it back to council. Um, again, we have five council members that want to see this project continue to move forward. And the only thing that I'm not gonna do is continually hash this out every single week. So Monday morning, um, again, Jesse doesn't get back until the afternoon, so I don't know how ready he will be for this Monday evening, um, but we will have this in front of him Monday morning, that way when he has the ability to go over both the resolutions, both um, the signed contract, if he feels there's any type of clerical error or anything like that, he will get that done for us. Yeah, just, um, I just, would, if, if somebody has anything else that they want to say about this, I, we're almost 9 a.m., I would like to get this moved forward. Uh, well, and, and just real quick, just if I can I add. would like to do, what I'm trying to figure out here is what phase of this. Uh, We're in the design. Yeah, okay, design well, then, then, so, so then the schematic, the schematic is first. Schematic is. Uh, okay, look, it, it doesn't. It okay, doesn't if you want to end this, if you want to get this projects, over with, when we do let's these just projects, out what, schematic and design doesn't, doesn't really matter. We're working through the process with the architect. We haven't got to construction bids documents yet by any means. The council is going to actually get to make, the council is going to actually get to make some choices and look at some things when we get there from a design standpoint. We're not there yet, so the council is going to have the opportunity to re-review stuff that we're that that we are going to put in front of them. So I think this is all very silly. I mean, there's no other word for it. I've never seen this behavior 
from anyone in these kind of processes in any municipality I've worked for. So just be patient. We're going to get everything back to you. Okay. Thank you. Eric. Like, oh, that's great. Like, oh, that's great bit. news, Eric. But here, let me explain to you what you, I, I was just told is that we're in the design phase. Oh my goodness. So that, it doesn't, it, it, you're good. Yeah. You're in a phase. The okay. schematic design. Okay. Okay. All my point to you, Tony, is, is we're not in the construction phase. We're nowhere near the construction phase. We're nowhere near the bid phase. We're in, we this, are we're in the, the first phase in the first of this 10%. Contract. This we're in the schematic design phase. Sure. Okay, fine. Sure. We're, we're schematic design phase. Whatever you want, right? What else? I'm do just we, trying we to figure to it out because it doesn't make sense. Okay, great. It doesn't I'm make sense doesn't to make you, sense. but this is a process that people go through in building buildings every single day. I'm not going to say that I know exactly step one, step two, step three, step four. That is why we hired Garmin Miller. I mean, what what the overarching issue here seems to be with the... And I, I'm not, you know, pointing out anyone specifically because, you know, I'm not, you know, there are questions from more than one person, but it seems that there's almost a, a distrust of professionals going on here. And I, I, I'm curious as to what, what we're hoping to accomplish by trying to, I, not to say second guess, but to... Um, scrutinize to such a high degree people who are, you know, educated and professional engineers or municipal planners or architects. I, I, I guess I'm not seeing what the, I, I'm not seeing what on earth we're hoping to accomplish by this. Well, I think one individual just wants to gum up the works. That's the best. No, I'm trying to, to understand what's going on and I'm trying to keep us doing things correctly. And, you know, I, I understand that I'm the only one here that feels anything's, anything's wrong. I, I, and I have no problem with that, you know, but Tony. I'm going to tell you that I don't, I've read the contract and it doesn't make sense that, you know, to me, we're, we're in the, we're about, we're still in, you're right. We are still in the design phase, but within one, one Deci you know, one more decision, we're going to be into the con construction phase. Yes. And, that means and, and you'll that, know when that's happening. And that, I understand that. I understand that we, I under this is what you, this is what's so frustrating for me is that you guys don't understand the points that I'm trying to make, which no, I consider don't. to be no, very no. valid. No, Eric, don't, let Tony. me finish. Gosh, darn it. The, the, the thing that I'm trying to figure out right now is what phase this contract we're in okay because i don't think it's clear that I'll tell you what. We'll the the architect we're in. We'll get and the how much opinion. more work what what i'm trying to explain no. let me finish everybody what what i'm trying to explain is that after garner miller comes back with its final design we are going to owe them, and let's just say that we're already going to owe them 45% of the contract after they come up with this final design. Okay. This is what I have an issue with, is that we paid them $12,000 to come up with a design, okay? Then there is another, you know, 45% of the work is in the design part of this contract. We've yeah. already paid them 12000 thousand dollars to come up with a preliminary design and aren't those designs transferable though should we choose another no, no, oh, architect it's hypothetically yes david yes I mean, david. it's not like it's a sunken cost it, no it, it, it's not it, it's not lost cost but their preliminary phase involved meetings when we get I, I, and i realize tony has no clue about how much design professionals cost engineers cost but that's completely in line it's expensive guys it's it's soft cost money and I'm it costs not. money to build a building and quite frankly you know, it's the smallest piece, right, to get to the point because you're you're walking into up to a two million dollar structure with with site costs at the end of the day. I mean, it's just it's going to be up there, and forty five thousand is quite normal. You're paying that all this stuff to get to construction. You had to involve engineers. You had to involve the architects' time, and it costs money. It is in the day. And just to point out the one more point to this, Tony, I, I get where you're coming from but five other council members are okay with this process and okay with up to $116,000, which completes all of phase two. I know okay. you don't like it, but okay. the other five council members agreed to do all of phase two from the design 
to the construction bid documents. And I think that's what you have a problem with. You don't want to spend the money. You had your vote. Five other members want to move forward with all of phase two. And that's all mm -hmm. I'm going to say about it. I am, I'm not arguing you. I can appreciate you having a strong opinion about not wanting to move forward with this. However, there are five other members and some of which have spoken up and it is, it, it, it just, I get it. Like, I do understand your frustration, but five members chose to spend up to $116,000 to complete phase two. And that's all I have to say. And it's now nine o'clock. So here, I will just add, boy, we just would have bought that 6999 building. I mean, we have a beautiful new community hey, Mark, center. That's I was money. your friend until five minutes ago. Well, and that's a great, a great point there, Mark, is that the council at that time all thought that this was a that 299 building was a great idea. The whole council thought it was. But in the end, the residents didn't think that. And right now, here I am again, being the only person, you know, on, you know, coming to these meetings. We decided that, that we need to update the community building. I don't disagree with you. For, well, no, I, you, you disagree. I said we, meaning the majority of council has decided and, and the, the mayor's office that the building we have is now unacceptable. Um, I mean, I believe you're right. We're going to have to do some stuff to get it to pass and to make sure it stays passed. Um, because people don't like spending money and there are people who don't care that our community building is crap and had mold in it and isn't handicap accessible and doesn't have space and that when I decorate for various MPCA pro projects like the Christmas party, I feel ashamed when my wife invites friend of mine to come there because it's such a stinking small terrible little space. And I understand a lot of people don't care because they're like, well, I'm never going to use the community building. I'm never going to be inside there. What does it matter to me? Um, I want us to have a nice community. I want us to have facilities that we can be proud of. And so I'm going to continue to vote to get those, even if there are people in the community who think it's a waste of money and that their taxes should be cut. Mark, I just want the record to say, no, that's not my priority. And if you want it to be your priority, uh, I think... The deadline for being on the ballot for council has passed, but I know there's a write-in uh, option because that's how I got on council a few years ago. I, I just Thank wanted you, to Mark. be clear to everyone that I'm not opposed to <laughs> improve, you know, redoing our community building. This is not, I, and but what I am in favor of, and just like, and where I differ from the council is- You, you are a member of the council, it. sir. What's that? I, I just, you say you differ from the council. You you are a member of the council, okay. sir. I, the I differ, my, my opinion that. differs from the majority of council as to the, this is a great building. You know, and I'll take a minute to just say that, you know, I the, my biggest problem with this building is the having the police on the side of the building that they are on. That's my biggest objection to this building. And I think about having... Uh, you know, what I envision the, the lakes to be is a place for people to go paddle boating or canoeing or ice skating. I think ice skating is the best one to bring up here because this is what I really don't like about the plan for the existing or the plan that we have in place now is the police's parking lot is going to be right there beside the, the lake along with a dumpster. Is going to be ten feet away from the lake. Dumpster this is, is going what to get. I hate moved. about that that drawing or that yeah, proposal. That, you'll see adjustments. You'll see adjustments. And what's wonderful about our lake is there's a lot of shoreline to work with. There's a lot of things to adjust. So give it some time. Respect the process. You're going to get to see some some additions and changes. So and dumpster will be one of them. I promise. Can't wait to see. All right. If I could bring up a new business item. Yes. Hey, Mark, before, uh, before you do, oh, I just wanted no, to I say, I, I had uh, just to, to close out the facility thing. I had gone over the documents uh, again last night and uh, I do feel that, uh, <clears throat> I, I do feel that some of the, the, the dates and the uh, sequence and the wording 
uh, added to the uh, confusion of uh, when you when you look at it in hindsight and you put it all together, there's there's a lot of things that could be cleaned up on here. I'm not sure the best job was done, but I will say regardless of that, is this the uh, the point is is that uh, five members of council, including me, uh, wanted to see wanted to proceed. I believe it, that the uh, the mayor is making an honest effort here and any discrepancy in these dates, which may or may not need to be fixed, any discrepancy in the dates and the sequence and the timing was not intentional and that uh, everyone uh, was acting in a good faith to move this forward, regardless of, of the, like I say, the, I, what I would consider a little bit sloppy work in getting there. Uh, I believe the uh, intentions were in the right place. I, I don't think, uh, I think for example, if the, if, uh, the legal counsel could at least look at the, uh, we were looking at the appendix A uh, letter uh, with the amounts on it in order to, when we did our vote and that letter changed after uh, we passed that. Now the letter does have a change in that one paragraph, but I, I don't consider that a substantive change. I know we had the discussion during the charter business when that changed. I don't believe it. I don't personally believe it was a substantive change, but still uh, it, 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 that same document was changed after the council passed based on the uh, appendix that was given to them. So there's some stuff out there that's a bit messy but again, I just want to reiterate that I believe that uh, uh, you know everyone's intentions were in the right place, and that there's uh, nothing that is substantively uh, incorrect. But it, it does it is a confusing um, kind of messy thing that that happened, um, and um, just uh, I hope we can uh, move forward. Done. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that was my point to it. I, at the end of the day, if there's a clerical error that needs to be done and date that needs to adjust or anything that Jesse does recommend doing, it's not an issue. I mean, uh, as far as on our end, and I'm just trying to make it clear to everybody also that regardless of the clerical error, it's still going to move forward, in my opinion, with the same five members. So we have no issue whatsoever. You know, obviously I have no issue because there's, I don't want there to be any sort of like, question as to a, a date of it. I have authorization. This is the amount that I have authorization. Jesse and him decided to make some adjustments to the actual contract because again, I didn't have authorization to sign the contract until after it passed, but neither here nor there, Diane, I do appreciate that. Um, so let's get it to Jesse. Um, anything that he needs adjusted in the event he get, does get home in time and has him, you know, adjust. If he does get it before the council meeting, I'd be more than happy to bring it to um, first reading or anything like that. If there is any adjustments, other than that, we would do it in two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, um, and we will get it to you as soon as possible. In the event that there is one, could you have Jesse take a look at the accuracy of the language in twenty one seventeen? We'll get him everything. Um, Jesse reviewed we, the whole you contract. Know, we will make sure well, that I'd like to hear Jesse. Yeah. when Jesse reviews these ordinances or resolutions. Absolutely. So yes, we will have him bring all of the above. Um, I'll have the I'll have the assistance on here. So I'm going to have her forward um, both resolutions as well as the actual signed as well as the um, the original Appendix A. So we're going to get him the Appendix A. We're going to get him the signed one. We're going to get him the both pieces of legislation. And then if he has any problems, questions, concerns with any adjustments, we will, or there may just be a yay or nay vote that he wants something adjusted and we can man, you know, we can just adjust it in there based on that. So um, we'll see exactly how he wants it done. If there is any um, adjustments or changes needed and you guys will make that decision. I assume that it will probably be the same voting the way that it goes, but who knows, you never know. So let's go. I know Mark um, wants to talk about, I don't know if this is what he wants to talk about now, but um, yep, meeting dates and times so, real quick um so the 16th is conf coffee with council i'm just going through because it's it's on the email chain we had not on the notices yet exactly because yeah, so i needed to know what we were calling it for sure yes that makes sense 
Okay, so on to the thing that I want to talk about that I sent the email out. I will not be at the Monday, the 23rd meeting. That is my first night of class. I am finishing up my master's. Uh, it, my, my class are every Monday from 4.45 to 8.30 p.m. Um, and so I had put out, if anyone would object for, in August, the meeting notice is already out. There's nothing we can do about that. But for September, October, November, and maybe the first half of December, moving our normal meetings from Monday night to Tuesday night, because otherwise, to be honest, I might make one council meeting a month, and I might be late for that, depending on what I work out with my professor. Um, council is important to me. I, I want to do a job and represent the community, but I can't get out of missing a once a week class every week for the entirety of the semester. Uh, and I have no issues with that put off uh, my finishing my degree for but for another year in hopes that the next time I go to take this class, it's not on a Monday. That's only offered once a year in the fall semester. Yeah, I have no problem with this at all. I, I totally get how atypical school and work schedules can influence and modify one's life schedule. So that, Good, that's fine the by me. Good, because you're the person I was most worried about because you have a weird non nine through five Monday through Friday schedule more so than I think about everyone else on council. Yeah, Tuesday is fine. Tuesday is fine for me. I'm off Tuesdays too. Okay, so um, I would like to say that uh, uh, I certainly uh, don't want to get in the way of uh, Councilman Brugger's uh, master's degree. But, uh, but uh, I, I just, uh, I guess I'm a more, tradi I am a more traditionalist in terms of, uh, I know we're a small village, so I guess we can be flexible, but uh, it's always, council meetings have always been on Monday. There hasn't always been two council meetings in the month um, and there haven't always been work sessions, but there, it's always been on Monday. And I, I just have a problem with us uh, taking it so lightly that we just change it up when uh, somebody has something like this or something even more severe. Uh, it could be someone all of a sudden has medical treatments that happen to happen on Monday or whatever, it's an individual. Uh, so I guess, I'm very uncomfortable with changing it from Monday. Um, I I feel the same. And as a as know. a comp as a compromise, perhaps we could uh, change the second council meeting of the month to a Tuesday, but leave the primary council meeting where all employees are in attendance. It seems like it's to leave that one on Monday as a compromise, but. I personally am very uncomfortable with uh, changing something that is uh, that is a tradition within the village that the council meeting is always on Monday. I, I may have been have I been on have I been on nights for I mean I've been on nights for like almost five you know almost four years now. Have I am I missing something about the significance of Mondays that I've honestly forgotten? No, no since, 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 since the beginning, since as long as I've been in the village, 30 some years, I've gone back to look to see if the if council meetings have ever been on anything but a Monday. And uh, especially the, I guess this, uh, uh, however the formula goes for the first Monday of the month, the first after the, uh, and it's always been that way. It, it's been that way for, uh, I mean, we're talking about, you know, I know that residents don't always choose to participate, but, um, but that is when uh, they expect their council to be meeting is, is those times. I, I, I would I, argue I, that with the digitization, with the digitalization of our meetings, that the specific date would be less critical. Um, unless you're someone like myself that plans the second Monday of every freaking month to be at the council meeting 
but that's what they revolve their lives around. You know, that is, it's more than tradition in my opinion. It's, it's what every municipality in the Ohio does. It's the second Monday, just about every that I've looked at, it's the second Monday of the month. It's the council uh, meeting. I, I will not dispute that. I don't know enough about other municipalities to, to intelligently comment. And that's well, not only I, that, in terms of the electronic, uh, the Zoom thing, I mean, it took, a, it took the state of Ohio or, to, or Franklin County to, uh, to uh, allow us to even consider doing a Zoom meeting. I mean, that was a major leap in uh, the, it's, the state government is pretty slow to change anything. Well, uh, crisis, crisis is the motivator for many changes. <laughs> right. Many advancements. <laughs> I just think, you know, if you, you know, the, I realize that there is a, there is a rules of council that says that a meeting can be changed, a meeting can be changed, but that, the spirit of that was never that, you know, we should meet once a, I mean, why not just meet one, you know, during the monthly meeting and say, okay, what's everybody's calendar look like? You exactly. know, what day do you want to do the council exactly. meetings on? You know, let's, let's pick a couple days here. Uh, you know, I, I just don't, I, I can't. Diane, I would say that's a little bit of a disingenuous straw man and or slippery slope argument. What's being requested isn't let's just pull out calendars. It's for a set three month period of time. We make a change and stick with a consistent change saying, well, why not? Is that going to lead to this? No, it's not. Now, you have a serious argument on that you don't want to violate tradition and the way things have been. And that is a perfectly adequate opinion, but I'm not going to debate fallacies of logic. Well, you're here's my opinion. You describe it as a slippery slope. It is a slippery slope once we start deciding that we need to revolve our schedule around yours. And that's exactly- Oh, now that's, that's not fair. I mean, that's not fair, but Tony, I think that's, that's a bit of an attack there. And I don't mean to attack because it- I don't mean that I, you know, again, you know, I, I'm old. And so sometimes I have worry about my, about my thought processes and attitudes. And I, I want to be, you know, I want to think I'm progressive, even though it, it's hard when you have so much history in your brain, it's really hard though, sometimes to, to flip it, to flip a switch. So, but I, I just, uh, you know, I personally, for me, I have, uh, made the four-year commitment and uh, made the commitment on Mondays, and it, and it hasn't always been convenient for me, but I've sucked it up and done it. And so I, you know, so so personally, I'm like, whoa, you know, I didn't know I. So so I have that emotional thing. I'm trying to put that aside, and I'm trying to think about think about what is it exactly. And and I think again, I don't know how. Or I'm certain that. Some of our residents would, would be uh, very surprised that we would do something like that. And there you have David who's like, yeah, what's the problem? You know, we're gonna have that full range of, of thought processes going on with this. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, in the past though, I would say, you know, having the history with the village, when somebody had something that was an air, something that, yes, okay, it's three months, but still, uh, people would, uh, council members might either uh, take a leave of absence or because, of course, Mark has an additional two more years of, of being on council should he want to choose to, to be on council. Um, but uh, so I, I guess that's just a, it's, it's, a, it's a philosophical issue at this point. I'm not trying to penalize or anybody i'm just i'm troubled by it i'm just troubled by it guys i have to i've got to get to bed i work again tonight but i guess my final statement is i i don't think that the pillars of western civilization will crumble on a, on the basis of a tuesday night meeting for a few months and so, i agree david, with you david um you just, can't do five more minutes is that what, is that what i'm saying That's what, no i i i've got a every day you know every saturday morning it's i gotta go to sleep and the well, meeting takes like five more minutes. Because he's got a work schedule and it's uh, nice that he does show up when some members of council don't ever show up to the Saturday work session. Right. Thank very you. Rarely. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Not a problem. Good night. I'll see you on, I'll see you on Monday. 
Okay, so my two cents, Mark, you are, I, I, I said my two cents on um, the email. Monday versus Tuesday, people don't like change. Um, I totally get it's it. Not about, it. It's not about that. Now, don't put it that way. That's not right. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that about any of you guys. I, I'm saying a lot of people don't like change and residents are not going to like change. Like you said, there's going to be some that aren't going to be thrilled with it. Um, as far as my schedule goes, I would prefer to have all of council there um, if, it, if it meets everybody else's um, calendar. We'll say it that way. Uh, I actually do, I wish it was on Tuesdays. To me, I do a lot of long weekend vacations and I've not been able to do that just for the simple fact that I would come home on Monday. Personal, sorry. And, and so for me, a Tuesday would actually be beneficial. The only other thing that I would say about that is I would love um, that it's gonna be a different council in January and mark, mark your calendar for this. I would love to have that conversation with the new group um, January 1st, because I think it is something that should be set each you know, every so often or every four years or whatever it is that, you know, if that's something that we want to do. Again, I would want to clear it with Chief to make sure that that's not going to be an issue with Chief and Eric and Jesse. Um, maybe they already have other municipalities that they need to be in on Tuesdays, so I don't want to speak for them. Um, but here's what I, you know, as far as that goes, I am totally on board for Tuesday night. It does not, I mean, I would be there. I'm there. I, I don't think I've missed very many meetings all year. Um, if it helps out for a very short time, I, the three or four people that have showed up at, at a meeting in the last two years, I think that they would try to alter their schedule to come Monday versus a Tuesday. So um, I don't have an issue with it. Mark, my recommendation is if we need to do a, um, I think the biggest question that I have is if we just need to do a voice vote versus legislation. If it's a voice vote, my recommendation is do a voice vote. We got six members. Um, that's the way I'm taking the rest of this year and I've been taking the last six months. We have, a, we have six members and we will um, go through each six member and see what they want to do. I think that would be your best bet and I have no problem doing it. And it is, you know, I had said that I felt the need to be amended, but it, you know, Mark pointed out that it specifically says that all we have to do is have a voice vote. Yeah, so my recommendation is just have it ready to go, Mark. Um, if it's something that you think would be beneficial, if you would like, I could talk to Matt, um, or I'm sorry, Chief Delp, uh, Eric, and for the next three months and see, four months, whatever, and see if yeah, that would be an option for that, them. Maybe that would help you. And then probably, Tuesday. yeah, it would actually have to be Monday night because I won't, won't be there on the 23rd, so the next official meeting. Yeah, the 16th I would do it. It's just coffee. So I will ask um, Eric if that would be an issue for him for the next three months. I will ask Chief, issue. just so you're aware if it is a problem. Um, that way you at least have that in your back pocket and you can make the decision if you want to move forward asking the rest of council and we'll see where it goes. And I, and I, I just from the email from Joe, I'm not sure. The, the question he asked was, is the date negotiable? So that would make me concerned that he's he may not be available on Tuesday. I don't know that. Correct. But I would hate to just swap yeah, one person for yeah, I would hate to swap correct. one person for another. Totally agree. Yeah, if, if someone is just like, well, Tuesday's definitely, I, Monday's the only day I can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes no sense to just swap one council member for another. Absolutely. Um, totally but agree. Yeah. But I think it's a valid question. And I think it's something, again, you know, that's something that we can look at in January. I know it's going to be, you know, I, I saw who's running. And then the two of you, um, that's something that I, I, I personally, I would love for them to be Tuesday nights. All right, well, we'll be waiting for the vote. And that, that's all I had for that. Okay. Okay, what are we naming Coffee with Council so we can get that posted? Coffee it's with community, Council. community forum is what is in the villager. I mean, I guess you can, as that, the only uh, vote I got was from uh, Brian and okay. uh, he said community forum. So I, okay. I went with that. Perfect. I will get that posted tomorrow or um, Monday. So we have that done. Um, and then Mark, I, I don't know if you saw it, but I did ask legislation, next legislation. I'm, I know that we're gonna talk about whether or not we move this to Tuesday. So no pressure but I don't think I posted anything for legislation for that reason right now, not in any hurry, but I just wanted you to know I don't have one on the books. 
for some reason, I had it on the 16th because I thought that was going to be a council meeting, and it's not. It's coffee with council. Yes. Um, but I could still do one there, 630. It's up to you. Because, I mean, even though, well, I mean, we don't have a meeting that night, and I don't think we have any pressing legislation that needs to get debated like the noise ordinance. Right. I mean, some council members haven't had legis or haven't had meetings in months. So, I mean, if you need to skip a month or whatever, that's entirely up to you. Yeah, I don't. I don't. If see we don't have something, need for it. Yeah. I mean, well, of course, uh, be what's from a higget. Well, that's that Garmin Miller stuff coming around. We're probably what kids further down. We'll have more needs for that, but I don't see a need for it this. Uh, this time around. Okay, so if anybody else wants to schedule um, their committee meetings, um, just if you need to include other members or include um, village staff, then just maybe start sending out those emails. If you don't, great. But at this point, this month, um, there are no committee meetings on the calendar that I'm aware of. So just whenever you guys have them, just make sure that you guys send them out, let me know. Um, so we can get the notices posted. Uh, the wall, I'll, I'll tell you guys a couple old business, new business. The hornet's nest was removed yesterday. Um, I think that's about as much as I have going on. That's that. It was on the walking way to school. So we wanted to make sure we got it handled. I know some people were, um, definitely wanting that done before school started. So it has been relocated. To the trash? Nice. I hope it was just killed. I don't know what they did and I didn't ask. Sometimes <laughs> it's less is better. And then we did have the West Nile, um, the traps that were set. I guess I could say that too. Um, that's why they sprayed because the West Nile was detected in one of our traps. To remind everybody, we have the two-year contract with Franklin County. Um, we only spray. I know some people would prefer we spray like we used to. I am one of those people. I know it's going to bite me in the butt, but um, I do prefer to be able to sit out back and, and enjoy it and getting bit by mosquitoes is not fun, but that's just me. Um, I also don't like to see butterflies die and all that kind of stuff, but I also am you know, selfish when I want to sit out back and not be eaten alive and have to spray nasty spray all over me. But anyways, I'll spray the spray. Um, we only, we do only spray in the event of, um, something coming up it, and it's not just West Nile, but I think that's what it was. Um, we only spray when something like that comes up. So again, it's just a reminder for people that that's why we're doing what we're doing. Blendon Township was no longer an option. Um, so we did have to contract with Franklin County, which is what Blendon Township also did. Um, it is not cheap. It is more expensive than spraying. Um, we can spray, we were able to spray more than what we're spraying now and now it's more expensive, but it is, it is what it is, unless we just don't ever spray at all. Um, so that's that, they did spray. If it happens again, um, we'll do the same thing. And I get notified usually 24, 48 hours before. And then I will update the website, we'll send out messages, um, we'll do everything that we can do and that's that. That's not good. Doesn't the contract allow us to have like one spray that, you know, an event spray or I think- I believe, good. yes, I do believe it did have that. So if it got so bad, I've not had complaints. Um, the gnats are the thing that drives me crazy. Like when we walk down Jordan Road, they are like, uh, they're, they're horrible. You like walk through, I don't know if it's like that everywhere in the village, huh? <laughs> It's a cloud of bugs. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, I mean, I, it's so funny because the other day I dropped my phone. I was doing one of these, like just trying to walk through it. it it's disgusting. So um, so if, if anybody has a gnat sprayer, I would like to get a contract with them. Um, but yes, if, if we did need something, maybe like before um, the village block party or something like that, if we find that they're getting really bad, that's something that we could try. Or if, if I start getting a lot of complaints, which I really haven't had. Um, maybe what we'll do is say, does anybody want to use the use our one little option to get it done? So, but at this point, I haven't had the complaints like I have in the past. 
I don't know if it was the placebo effect, but I, you know, I saw the truck go through the neighborhood and it wasn't as bad quite, I didn't think it was quite as bad last night as it was the night before. That's all I can say is, but that again, I don't know if I just, if it was the weather or what, but, but I can't back, I can't, I did see them go through the village. I can verify that they did go through, at least on my street. That's all I got. Awesome. Does anybody else have anything for Monday night that they know they want to talk about just to get it at least on the table? If not, let's go home. It's 930 and I'm tired. I'm going to go take a nap like David is. <laughs> What'd you do last night? <laughs> not that I'm just tired. I, I wish I, I wish I could tell you that I did something exciting, but I, I went to the casino and I was home by 10. Well, if it's anything like you, this whole Garmin Miller thing's got me wore out. I may, well, you know, I just try to, um, know that if there's, I, I, here's what I know. I know my intentions and I know my intentions are good. So at the end of the day, if there's a clerical error and somebody from council points it up more power to them. I think it's, it's good that people are reading the information. It's good that people are looking at the information and that I don't have an issue with. Um, but I would like it to be a productive conversation and a positive conversation to move forward. Um, because at the end of the day, well, most of us want to see a new facility building. Um, again, we have met with them. I'm not going to go in detail on it right now, but we have started talking about designs and I will, I, I will assure everybody that there are several things that has been pointed out and we have, we have definitely brought that to light in every, in both meetings that we have had with them. Um, as far as bathrooms go, as far as the, like Eric had talked about the dumpster, um, the restroom close to, these are all things that have been discussed at full length um, with Garmin Miller. So just as a, you know, just as a courtesy for you guys to know what is going on, I feel like it's important for you guys to know that, but there is absolutely nobody, myself and Eric and Chief and the administration, we work in this building every single day with the exception of Eric, which is most days. Um, there is no one that wants this building more than the administration and now being in the building myself. There, I want council to like the building. I want council to move forward and I want the residents to love the building. Um, we're not all going to get what we want. We can't afford what we want. Um, but what our needs are is extremely important. So at the end of the day, I want something that is functioning. Um, I may not like where one of the rooms is at, but I would rather have 90% of what I want than nothing at all. So all I can tell you is we are doing this in good faith. We are doing everything that we can to check as many boxes as we possibly can. And we are listening to what council says. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen. Um, family restrooms is one, um, you know, just individual locked room. You guys know where we're going with this and, and they are being discussed. All I can tell you is they are, they are, they are. And we want to move forward with this more than anything in the world because we're the ones that's in there, but we're not gonna do something um, that doesn't work. So we're, we are trying, we are doing what we need to do and hopefully this gets done and everybody's 90% happy. And I, I'm gonna have to end with one last thing now that you bring up the, uh, you know, the- Sorry guys, oh. I opened a can of worms. <laughs> I'm teasing. What I would like to point out is that the contract, and this is why I wanted to know what phase of this project we're in, is that the schematic design phase of the project requires approval of council for the plan. The design phase, or, or I, you know, I maybe I know that there's at least one point in the contract where the design needs to be approved by council according to the contract that we just signed. And we're and not there. Keep saying that you know we're going to do everything, you know. Well, I. That's great. And council is going to have a chance to approve these designs. And, and again, just so this is just in, in respect to that, Tony, there, we have already had some of the discussions. Um, what would the outside of the building look like? What would this look like? And those are, you know, the goal is to have our top options and bring them to you. So we would have them design a couple different things um, and then bring, so there is discussion. They are going to be brought to you guys. The design is going to be brought to you guys. We are nowhere near that yet. Um, and to be fair, Eric, was it 
yesterday we met with them. I, I told you, I don't even know what yeah, I, yeah, you asked me what day I signed something. Did we meet with them Thursday or Friday? No, we met with them yesterday. Yes. Okay. See, there you go. Um, so we met with them yesterday at 11 AM. So we're nowhere near anywhere that, that we're ready to bring anything to council. It is strictly discussions of once again, in person, not just emails, bringing to light some of the things that Beth McFarland had said, or Mark had said, um, Diane had brought up, you know, different locations of rooms. That is what was discussed yesterday. It was a great, great, great meeting. Um, and it, it's going to be brought. I mean, again, all I can tell you is administration wants this to get done. Um, so we're hopeful that we can get, check as many boxes as we possibly can, that the residents will be happy, council will be happy, but I can't promise that everybody's gonna be 110% happy. And I get in trouble for saying 110%, 100% happy. Um, because again, we do have a funding issue. So we can't have everything we want. We want our needs. Well, I will say that the great, the best part about this contract is that it, it changes the way I look at it is that council actually has two more opportunities to be able to weigh in on this, which wasn't the way it was has been presented in the past. No, uh, again, we don't. I don't want to get to the final phase, Tony, and you guys throw a conniption fit. Nobody wants that. I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is to get a new building. The goal is not to try to get council as mad as possible. At the end of the day, we want a new building, and we are going to do everything that we can to get this design as close to what it is within the range that we can afford. Um, we have already been told certain things um, and it's just, it is going to be what it is. And you're just going, if you council, there's going to be six votes. Everybody's going to have a vote as far as what the building looks like and some of the design and all of that. Not everybody's going to be happy, but as long as we can check as many boxes as possible, I hope people keep an open mind. Well, and I haven't seen it either. Real quick final thing, just as a positive, apparently putting the stuff in the newsletter and getting the word out has worked. According to Franklin County Board of Elections, we actually have six people registered for uh, the four open council seats. So it'll be a competitive race, including by what I can see, three people who have never been on council before and at least one from the new MI development section. So. And it'll it all depends to see on what happens. Depends on whether their their petitions were filled out correctly, you know, because the first time I filled out my petition, it got thrown out because I put the wrong date. Right. You know, you know well, so I'm just looking at the it county. was very interesting. I'm just looking at that what uh, Franklin County says the candidates filed are. So I don't know if they put that up before they yeah. check or not. But. Be, that will be decided on the 16th. Yes. August 16th is when they certify the. Yeah. Gotcha. So six people have at least put in their paperwork, assuming they did it right. We'll have competitive elections. A lot of so people nice. actually. Yeah, it, it, it's it's great. And it's funny. It's not funny. Maybe I shouldn't bring this up, but the amount of people that actually there are people paying attention and there are people that are interested in paying attention because there were several, several, several people that actually pulled um, petitions and didn't turn them in and didn't turn them in. So, you know, that's one of those that you wonder why, and it would be nice to know why. Um, sometimes people just get so mad about something and they decide to run over and get one because they want to run for council. And then they're like, eh, it's not. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know why they, they pulled petitions and didn't do it. Maybe that something came up. I think that's an example. I think the, the uh, you know, the common denominator and people decide they want to run for council is because they don't think things are going very well. <laughs> it's not it's not because they think things are great it's because they think we need help I know that's why I did it well I can tell you actually I, I do know two of them that are running and they don't think we need help they're excited to get involved so I, I actually I, I personally know two of them they're very excited to get involved um, one is actually a newer resident not a new resident but in the older section um, which would be an amazing fit she's she's just super excited to get involved because it's she um, she loves her neighborhood. Simple as that. that. That's what she has said numerous times. I love my neighborhood and I want to get involved and she doesn't see any issues or problems. It's just the fact that she thinks that this is something that would be exciting for her. Um, the other person is, is a very involved person. Um, we see her name all the time on Facebook and everything. And she's the same way. I, she, she really doesn't see, um, I don't want to speak for, her, but it, again, it was more about 
how can I help? I want to get involved. This seems like something that I could do. So, you know, I think that there, there's always those people that want to get involved because they don't like something the way that it's going. And I, I was one of those too, Tony. So, um, and now look, here we are. So there's, there's a good selection of people. There's six people. Um, I don't know if you can still write in, Mark. Maybe you can. I don't can. think you can now that there's six people. Yeah, I think you can only do it if you don't have, but I don't know. I believe you can always register to be a write-in candidate, um, but with six people running on the ballot, uh, I, that would be a hard hill to climb. I would imagine. Probably. Because you need to find more people who are willing to write your name in than there are people willing to vote and just say, well, I don't know these four because right. their names sound good, or I know that person, or... right. Well, and again, we have to get through the certification process to make sure that we actually do in fact have enough. And then the next part to that is, and we saw this the year that Diane and I and Tony ran, um, you know, things come up for people. So they decide that they don't, they're not able to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. and you know, hopefully I, my big hope for these people, and I'm gonna end it with this because I'm, I, I wanna go take a nap too. Um, I hope that the people that are running, and if any of these people are listening to this, I, I know that this is not a live stream, so they would actually have to request this video or what, uh, maybe it is uploaded online, Never mind. Upload. Um, I hope they get involved. I hope they do come out to some of the council meetings and see how it's done. I think being there in person is always a great thing. Um, I, I know that they can watch the videos. I know they can see what's going on. So I'm not saying just because they're not there, um, but it does show, you know, if, if they're able to get out there on a Monday night and see everything, it, it makes it appear um, is if they're, they're really vested and they're really excited about getting in there and they have the ability to show up on a Monday night, even if we change it to Tuesday. So I, I'm hoping that we see some of these faces because there's some faces I don't know. Um, and obviously there's, there's a couple that we do. There you go. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Sold. Okay. I'll step in for Brian. <laughs> All right. Bye guys. Bye, Good night. Everyone.